I get quite a few people asking me what turbo manifold I'm running and I just wanted to go over my setup. This is the same whole set HE341 modified by Savage Fabrication with the 67 millimeter 10 blade turbine uh, that I made 550, 559 wheel horsepower. So that's what we've got. It's a T3 flange, 9 cm housing, and this is where all the magic happens. At the time when I built this, I was working part time and all I had access to was a like hundred dollar MIG welder. So I did it all with just inch and a half pipe. So just inch and a half pipe turned and merged together into the T3 flange. This is a half inch steel T3 flange from like Vibrant Performance. And uh, these are the stock manifolds flipped backwards. And since then, I have noticed that the manifolds, they work really well backwards, but they don't perfectly line up with the gasket on the ports. So over the few years, I've, I've blown out the gaskets um, in the back, I think, uh, but it's not a huge deal. Like, I mean, I've been running this setup for six or seven years and uh, I've only damaged the gasket like once. And that was over the course of like five years. It, it holds up really well. So you can flip the manifolds, although, uh, you know, it's not ideal. It works. Also, you'll notice there's a really bad kink bend right there, which people would say doesn't work, but it absolutely does work. It's just not ideal. And that supports 550 wheel horsepower. This is also three inch, just regular exhaust tubing, aluminized. This is inch and three quarter pipe from the original exhaust. So the same pipes that come off of the, the down manifolds that go down uh, under the car, I just reused that pipe at the time. Um, it's all just basic MIG welded together. The main thing that I put my uh, money into at the time was a TurboSmart wastegate. I had previously worked with friends that had cheap wastegates at the time and they all had issues and we could never get them to run right, the Chinese wastegates. I know there's a lot better options now, but um, currently this is what I've been running for, I don't know, seven years now and it has never ever failed me. This Turbo Smart wastegate is great, it's a 40 mil um, and I just teed kind of right in on an angle. It's not the best or most ideal, but it works really well. I've never had boost control issues. And then I just tapped into this manifold right here to do uh, drive pressure for the turbine. So EMAP, exhaust, gas, pressure, pre-turbine. And then also right here, there's a bung that is threaded in for running post-turbine pressure, so exhaust pressure. This is, um, yeah, and it's just, three inch pipe goes back to an elbow and then a 45 down there but really that's as simple as it gets i just put fresh gaskets on it fresh gaskets between there i cut the manifolds right there you can see i actually have over on the workbench let me sneak around here i have some of the the piping these are weld elbows so you get these at industrial plumbing supplies so a lot of uh, commercial buildings they use this and it gets welded together it's just um, inch and a half weld elbows that come pre chamfered they're coated in like a paint so you need to sand that off before you weld them but it already gives you a chamfer so you can uh, put them together and root weld them so just like just like that and uh, yeah it's that simple I used schedule 10 inch and a half piping you can use schedule 40 but right here is just schedule 10 and it's held up really well um i have had to fix a crack once in the past few years uh, i think that's the only time i've ever had any part failure on that other than the gasket blowing out which was after like five years so here's actually here's some pictures of the schedule 10 this is just a few pieces cut into a pie. You can see that next to, let's see, this is a schedule 40. So you can see the thickness difference. Uh, 
uh, schedule 40 is just really beefy and retains the heat really well but I just had some schedule 10 that I found on the clearance at my local uh, my local metal supplier and uh, yeah that's that's really it just a typical metal stainless steel flange gasket that goes between the turbo this is a dash 10 uh, oil line that seems to work really well. It just goes down to the top of the oil pan down there. I just welded in a bung. And uh, this is a dash four push lock. So you get the Instagrip 300 is my favorite flavor of push lock. But like Parker push lock, this is, this is that same stuff. This is quarter inch and it's just a quarter inch JIC to barb um, flare fitting. And uh, then I just have a, I forget what the thread pitch is on this, but it's a it's metric straight thread with a gasket into a dash through uh, dash four. So it's a dash four, and there's your dash ten for the oil drain. So that's uh, in the most basic fashion what it takes to make 550 wheel horsepower. It doesn't take much. Uh, I think. There's no shame in having really nice, good looking stuff, um, but for a budget, and at the time there weren't very many options available when I did this, there was like one manifold out there. Uh, now there's the Kangaroos manifold. Um, I actually have their sticker right here, and I bought their M20 manifold, but the Kangaroos manifold is far superior, and if I get the funding in the future, I would like to switch over to the Kangaroos manifold with the upgraded turbo, and redo the exhaust, uh, make it a little bit cleaner and uh, improve it a little bit. But that's essentially the turbo kit on this car. I'm trying to think of anything else. I just have like a Mac uh, solenoid that I got off of like Amazon. You can find these They're Who knows if they're actually real brand Macs, but this one works really well. And um, yep, just goes to the top of the gate, tees in down here. Um, right there to the reference on the turbo and uh yeah that's it i'm trying to think of anything else um put my wide band sensor just at the back here on an angle that seems to have been a really good spot for it you don't want it too vertical or too horizontal or underneath uh, where moisture can get trapped in it and damage the sensor but um yeah it's really basic um, I understand that it looks awful, but it works is my argument, and I have dyno results to prove it. So um, if you need to do the same, you can with just a MIG welder and uh, some saws. Uh, I think I mostly just use a hacksaw on this and a die grinder. So there you go. That's a 500 wheel horsepower capable turbo kit that looks pretty ugly, but works. Um, this is where all the magic happens, right there. Thanks again uh, to my turbo sponsor, Savage Fabrication, Insta Spool Performance. Uh, feel free to hit him up with any of your turbo needs. The guy absolutely knows what he's talking about, and he made me a combination to easily make over 500 horsepower. Thank you.